in North Dorset today. And it's a good day for a walk. Well, good morning! And yes, uh, we're out on another walk today. If you follow me and you've been watching my videos, you may recognise this place because I am currently at Compton Down in North Dorset. And the big hill in front of me is Melbury Beacon. That's actually going to be my way back today. I'm not going up there on the way out. But it's really windy and I hope you can hear what I'm saying. hope the wind's not affecting the microphone too much. Um, so yes, today I have started from Spread Eagle Hill. And I'm going to do a circuit, but this time, whereas last time I went south of this ridge that I'm on now, today I'm going to head north from this ridge. I've dropped down off the top of the ridge already. It was a short walk along the top before dropping down, so hopefully the wind's, uh, wind's dropped a bit down here. So yes, so I'm heading north of that ridge. Last time I headed south, uh, but today I'm heading north. The route I'm going to take is on paper between 10 and 11 miles. I'm expecting it to be longer than that in part because we've had a lot of rain over the last week 10 days and i'm expecting it to be muddy so uh, i think there may well be some detours that i'll need to take on this one but in theory the route i'm taking uh, goes down through melbury abbas which is a village in front of me uh, east melbury higher coombe Wincombe Park, Shaftesbury, Can, and then back to Melbury Abbas again. So yeah, 10 or 11 mile circuit. I'll put up the map at this point um, so that you can see roughly where I'm heading and uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, it's extremely windy on the tops and I'm expecting it to be boggy in the bottoms. So it could be a fun day. <laughs> so we're still starting the walk. Um, well, obviously on Spread Eagle Hill, but the first place we come into is Melbury Abbas. Lovely little village. Um, it's got its issues, but it's a nice village to walk through. And I just think it's such a lovely Dorset name, isn't it? Melbury Abbas. It's kind of got that Dorset ring to it. Uh, the name actually comes from two Old English words, I believe. Male and burr, which essentially means a multicoloured fortified place. It's interesting. Abbas comes from the fact that it was once owned by Shaftesbury Abbey hence Abbas and uh, Shaftesbury Abbey was well we'll come across that later because we're going in through Shaftesbury today but Shaftesbury Abbey owned a lot of land around this way so that's where we've come from came over the hill on the left which is Compton Down into what I call the saddle because that looks like the saddle of a horse, side of a horse and then the hill we come back over is Melbury Beacon at the top but at the moment we are in the valley at Melbury Abbas and I like Melbury Abbas um, it's a lovely village to walk through but it's got a problem and that is traffic there is so much traffic. This is a real rat run. 
although the, it's an unclassified road or B road I'm not sure unclassified I think um, there is an A road that goes from Blanford to Shaftesbury but very little traffic actually takes that road the problem is that um, the A road is windy whereas the road that comes up over the top of the ridge and through Melbury Abbas is straight and hence no matter what efforts the council have tried to get traffic to use the A road they have failed which means that in this little village which sits at the bottom of the valley uh, you get all kinds of traffic including trucks and vehicles that really this wasn't made for but it's a lovely village and it's got some lovely old buildings like that one which is the old schoolhouse date on it says 1844 and there's a few lovely uh, buildings like that in this village This is rather lovely. A little touch of spring, apart from the hedge cutters that are going. So this is Melbury Abbas Church. Not the original church. The original church was in a poor state of repair, so kind of mid 1800s. A new church was built. Uh, in fact, it's built by Sir Richard Glynn, who owns most of the land around here at the time. We'll have a quick look inside, I think. Does that mean the mower, I wonder? <laughs> Attractive church, not by any means the oldest or whatever in Dorset, of course. It's comparatively modern. I don't know, 18, mid 1800s, I guess that's modern by, by church standards. But we have an interesting path to go down now. I was kind of hoping this would be open, but I had my doubts. It does get a bit overgrown at times. But it goes down side of the hill down to the road. I'm sorry about the noise. You can see the road down there that goes through the village which is a very busy road as you can see. Unfortunately, we do have to come out onto that road for a short time before we pick up the next footpath, but it's only a short distance, so hopefully it should be fine. I like this path, it's kind of quirky, this path, dropping down the side of the hill like this with the church behind me on the top. So we're now on the road just briefly but actually I suppose cars in some ways are synonymous with this place because would you believe in the early 1900s there were hill climbs that went up from Melbury Abbas village in fact there were two
Uh, one went up over Spread Eagle Hill, where we started from, and the other went out the other side of the village, up what's known as the Zigzag Hill. And they were cars and motorbikes, that sort of thing, early 1900s. And this is a kind of funny bit of the walk, because you feel like you're walking into somebody's garden. Nice blossom on the trees. But you're not, it's a public footpath. Glad I don't have to walk through that. Although I am expecting this to be kind of like that in some ways because we're going down further down into the valley where the water will sit. Yes, yeah, so hill climbs went up from there back in the day um, and this kind of still happens but on bikes now. I found, um, I noticed the other day I was looking online and actually a cycle, cycling. Um, there seems to be some kind of competition to see who can ride up to the top of Spread Eagle Hill the quickest. That's quite a tall order on a bike. I certainly wouldn't want to do it with the amount of traffic there is coming through here. But I like this walk because this is kind of a bit different because you always drive through Melbury Abbas. You never walk it simply because of the amount of traffic. So it's somewhere you don't walk. And it's just interesting, you see it from a car, but when you walk it, you get a whole different perspective of the village of Melbury Abbas, which is like this, and it's pretty, especially in the spring. Hmm, this looks interesting. Kind of expecting this. Well, it looks a little bit tricky to get through here. Sadly my boots leak, otherwise I just plow through the middle of it. So yeah, with Melbury Abbas they have tried to find ways of and bypassing it, putting in a bypass to divert the traffic. But sadly it's, well sadly for the villagers, it's all failed because um, a lot of the land around here is conservation land. So it's really difficult to figure out how you can put a bypass in without kind of wrecking the natural landscape. Oop. Sorry about this, this is a bit lumpy and awkward. Right, around that. I am so glad I've got my walking pole. Invaluable. Three legs are so much better than two in the mud. And back there I needed two hands, so I had to stop filming. <laughs> But yes, lovely. This is I like this. I like this little bit of walk across here. Oh, even if there are stiles for me to get over. Yeah, the best time actually in Melbury Abbas was a few years ago. There is a Holloway. In fact, there are a couple of Holloways around here, but there's a Holloway called Diners Hollow, and the road actually goes up through the middle of the Holloway, steep-sided. And um, there was a problem, the, there was danger of landslip coming down onto the road. And so they actually closed off Diners Hollow for, I don't know how long it was, a year? Must have been a year or something like that. Um, 
and so no traffic came through the village it was like a ghost village instead of being like a main road major road it was a uh, quiet and peaceful i bet the villagers must have loved it um, i made the most of it because i came and i was able to walk through the village on the road and walk up through diner's hollow without any traffic and that was awesome you get to explore a village that you don't normally explore that much um, they reopened the road in fact although it's single carriageway now with traffic lights at each end so they've narrowed it to avoid problems with landslips and so on but that i think was probably the best time in melbury abbas lovely dorset town village with a dorset name <laughs> and the sun's come out wonderful like we've got a bit of new growth on the trees new sprouting buds spring is coming where are we now it's about i think it's the 26th of february nearly the end of february anyway at the moment and uh, when i started walking i heard skylark singing so it's good news we've seen blossom already definitely got some leaves breaking out so spring is on the way so we're now climbing back out of the valley bottom again we will come out onto another road in a minute but it's one of the back roads of Melbury Abbas village and uh, very little traffic so it's, uh, it's a very pleasant walk so Melbury Abbas is another place with a quarry Wherever I walk, I seem to find quarries. And some of these older buildings are actually built with the local stone, which is known as green sand. I always think these hedges are really tenacious, aren't they? I think it's, I think it's beach hedge i'm not sure um kind of it's like autumn isn't it but here we are in february with spring coming up and it's still hanging on to its leaves whereas everything else has shed its leaves long ago adds a bit of color though to the scene this is a place i'd love to explore loads of old machinery here rusting away few steamrollers over there it's like it's privately owned of course <laughs> I, can't, I can't go in and look round but I'd like to <laughs> so up here I've just got to hop across the main road pick up the path the other side but this is uh, this junction that I'm coming up to if I turn right I would reach Zigzag Hill which I mentioned earlier as one of the hill climbs out of Melbury Abbas and interestingly it is said to be the bendiest mile of road in the UK but I'm pretty sure as a few others would claim that as well but I will walk down that at some point because that's an interesting place to walk as well I've cycled down it I've driven down it and I've walked down it but we're just going to cross over the road here 
head away from the traffic again. So we're off road again now. This is a lovely path to walk. It's quite clear, clearly marked. It's not bad underfoot, but it's lovely in the spring because when the hedgerows are out, it's just lovely along here, I think. I did speak too soon earlier, by the way. I said it was a good track a good track and not too bad underfoot but it's actually been quite muddy and boggy in places but doesn't matter um i will um put this route up on my website by the way um the dorset rambler.com most of my routes go up on there uh i'll put a warning on it can be muddy in winter <laughs> But I think that's probably true of every single walk in Dorset, to be honest. So there's nothing new about that. We've got a little bit we can skirt around the buggy, boggy bits. Um, so yes, look up the DorsetRambler.com uh, routes. Click on routes, and you'll find I think most of my ones that I videoed are up there, plus others. is where I turn off my nice hedgerow lined path. Notice there's some deer in that field over there. Look, that beautiful. I know they're common, but I always love seeing deer. They are there, pretty well in the middle of my picture, I believe. They're eyeing me up, wondering whether I'm a threat or not. <laughs> lovely I think. I like to see wildlife even if it's deer. Well as opposed to anything more exotic I mean. I don't need exotic wildlife. I'm happy with deer or a robin or anything else. What I do have to work out though is how I'm going to film wildlife when I'm out walking. At the moment I'm just filming with the GoPro which is easy and well in the sense that it's very light it doesn't take up much room or much weight and it captures good videos I think but the problem with the GoPro is it doesn't have a zoom lens and it also doesn't have any close focus facility either so in the spring I think I might find it a bit frustrating not able to get photographs of distant wildlife or close-ups of bugs and things or orchids or whatever. So I've got to try and sort that out somehow. Even back there, because it's slightly wide angle, the deer will be very small in the frame. Anyway, that's another issue to sort out before spring and summer. I see more water coming. <laughs> hmm. Quite good use of a piece of old farm machinery. That was good in my garden actually. <laughs> Maybe not. Is it a lake? Is it a pond? No, it's a puddle! 
<laughs> there's a lot of those about. So we're just out on the road just for a short time. Before we pick up the track again the other side. So I'm still on the road. But this is a lovely road that doesn't actually go anywhere other than to this village which is Higher Coombe. So it's a quiet road with virtually no traffic on it unless they're coming to the houses. And I like, uh, I always try to include villages in my walks because I love walking through villages. So the cottages and especially in the spring and summer when the cottage gardens are in flower and it looks like this is the same stone as Melbury Abbas was built with looks like it's green sand not that I'm a geologist but it's got that look about it Serving hatch. Teas and coffees, maybe. <laughs> the sun's come out. We've got some blue sky above us. That's really good. A fair bit of cloud so far, but this is lovely. This is a lovely wall in the summer and it's in flower. Lovely thatched cottage. It's a beautiful part of the walk. It's got this lovely old woodlands. And a nice track to walk as well. It's actually quite hard underfoot this track, despite the fact it's a bridle way. another lovely walk down through these woods, more ancient woodlands. This is actually a bit of a holloway as well, a bit further down. Sinking down into a holloway. was an awesome bit to walk that was down the Holloway. A bit um, deceiving because of the leaves scattered over the top. It looks more solid than it is. It's actually quite boggy where the horses have been going. But it's such an awesome place. I just love this place. With the old woodlands. And a log, which potentially could be a nice stopping place for a bit of lunch, I think.
very nice spot for lunch that was. Well, I'm on the road again now. Benefit of being in a holloway is that when it's foggy like that is down there, just climb up on the side where it's usually dry. to have found some new friends. <laughs> if they think I've got food. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed walking down through those woodlands. Nice view, but I'm kind of glad I have to say, to have got a hit to a bit more solid ground underfoot because that was quite hard work and extremely boggy in places. Ah, good fun though, good fun. More blossom. So we must see wind up now at Wincombe Park. So this is Parklands. There's another, another George King George letterbox. Um, Wincombe Park is a Georgian villa which owns a lot of the land around here, the woodlands, uh, the farm and um, lakes as well and it's uh, it's lovely parkland you can actually see you can tell it's parkland can't you but uh, Wincombe Park is private house but I think they also run a language school and do kind of retreats and things like that and uh, yeah they've got this parkland that people can wander around of course if they're staying there swim in the lakes wild swimming and it yeah it's a lovely little spot so that's the actual house at Wincombe Park Georgian house lovely place lovely views really nice heading down towards the lake. So this is one of their lakes down the bottom. This again, of course, at one time all belonged to Shaftesbury Abbey. In fact the lakes, I think, were their fishing lakes. They obviously bred and kept fish and that was providing some of the food for the abbey. So we skirt along this side of the lake. I think I've gone slightly off the path slightly so I'm just dropping down to pick up my path again where I was meant to be. But it's a lovely countryside. House looks quite imposing looking down over its valley. Well, if it were a hot summer's day, I wouldn't mind a swim in there. <laughs> Not today, though. We are now heading up here and heading towards Shaftesbury. Still in the parkland really, or the outskirts of the parkland. I'm climbing my way out of the valley. Nice path to walk. The light coming down through the trees, isn't that beautiful? But this will be nice 
in a what another month is it? I think these are ram ramsons, aren't they? Wild garlic. Which if you've got a sense of smell, I'm told smells lovely. Isn't that awesome? That light coming through the trees. Ah, amazing. So we've arrived in Shaftesbury, just making my way through the streets to reach the centre. Now reach the centre of Shaftesbury. We're just going to take a little detour down here before we continue on our way. So this is Park Walk, which is uh, not on my route, but it's a very pleasant place to have a little wander, and uh, you've got amazing views from here as well. And we will see where we will be going when we leave here. This is the amazing view over the Blackmore Vale from Shaftesbury. In the previous video we saw it the other way actually, because over the other side, over here, is Melbury Beacon, which we were not that long ago, a few weeks ago, and that's where we're heading for again from here. Some lovely views here, and Shaftesbury's got some lovely old cottages as well. Interesting little town. This is also the site of Shaftesbury Abbey. Which was founded by Alfred the Great and he appointed his daughter as the first abbess and it was a substantial abbey and as I said earlier we've seen uh, quite a lot of the land that was owned at one time by Shaftesbury Abbey. In fact it used to be said back in the day that if the abbess of Shaftesbury could marry the abbot of Glastonbury they would own more land than the King of England. Interesting thought, isn't it? <laughs> I think one of the things that made it wealthy is that the relics of Edward the Martyr were brought here As happens with a lot of these abbeys, if you can get the relic of somebody famous, some saint or whatever, it becomes a place of pilgrimage. So it increases its uh, standing, if you like. And lots of people come and I guess that must 
increase their income? I don't know, I presume that's what happens. But yeah, so it was uh, founded by one king, Alfred the Great, destroyed of course by another king, Henry VIII. And uh, it's quite funny when you think about it, I guess. You've got one man wants a divorce but can't get it under the laws of Rome. So he declares, sets up the Church of England, declares himself head of the church, gets his divorce, takes over all of the um, abbeys and religious grounds, ransacks them, ruins all of this amazing architectural heritage of this country and leaves us where we are now with just ruins sad really but we now get to walk down what is probably one of the most famous streets in the country I would think is of course Gold Hill and there can't be anybody who doesn't know Gold Hill and the Hovis adverts in the 1970s <laughs> famous streets in the country. Gold Hill. And the high wall on the right is the ancient wall of the Abbey, or Abbey grounds I guess. And there's all these lovely cottages. Absolute delight. So we're now making our way out of Shaftesbury. In fact, we are going to head literally right into the wilderness. And we've arrived in the wilderness. <laughs> That's what this piece of land is actually called, known as the wilderness. And uh, it's got an interesting story in recent years. Uh, it's always been used by the people of Shaftesbury for walking and playing and dog walking, that sort of thing. And uh, the owner, existing owner, wanted to sell it. So the people of Shaftesbury wanted to buy it for the keep it for the borough or for as open land if you like um, but sadly they didn't raise quite enough money and when it came to auction I think they didn't get it it was sold again to um, private private ownership I think although I'm not sure who or what I don't know don't know the ins and outs of it of it but it was sold anyway privately I mean, you can still walk down it, obviously, because it's a public footpath. But yeah, interesting story. The wilderness. <laughs> so we're heading south now. And heading towards Melbury Beacon, eventually. But we've got a few things to see before we get there. So 
this is the view. Amazing. So what we've got is you've got Compton Abbas airfield over the top. Not much flying going on. And the high point is Melbury Beacon, which is where we're heading. Got to drop down onto the lane at this point, just for a short distance. You can see the view through the trees. more of the view and come over there and over there I think is probably Duncliffe Woods I'm not sure it's over that direction Duncliffe Woods is a nature reserve good for bluebells hmm. Some nice clouds over there coming soon to a field near you <laughs> We're off road again now, although in actual fact it might have been better to have stuck to the road because it's a bit soft this field. Back down to the lane again. So interestingly this tiny lane, French Mill Lane it is, um, was at one time, I think it was thought to be, thought to have been the main route south from Shaftesbury. Interesting, and it's such a tiny lane. Um, has of course been superseded by other routes now, which makes it good for walking because you never, nothing ever comes down here. Which is awesome, and there's some nice cottages as well. to mention Corvids. <laughs> A little bit of spring. Pretty. And French Mill Lane gets its name from French Mill, which is here. which was originally a corn mill back in the 1800s, now a private dwelling. A little pond opposite, which I presume is where the mill pond was situated originally. That was what drove it. River that drove it is the River Sturple, which is this river here that runs down the valley. So the River Sturple, Sturple stands for Little Stour, which is fitting because it drains into the River Stour eventually. But the River Sturple is fed originally, starts as a spring at Melbury Abbas, a mile or so just up the valley. But in one mile of River Sturkle, and a tiny stream it is really, even now, with all the rain we've had, uh, that river had five mills in one mile, a one mile stretch. And it drove all five of them. So up the valley that way, or down the valley I should say, was Gears Mill. We have French Mill here, and then we're going to continue along the river. And we will pass the other three mills, which is Can Mill, Sprague's Mill, and Melbury Abbas Mill. So five mills within one mile 
driven by a river which is a stream to be honest amazing and we're slowly making our way along the valley bottom following the river Sturkle and it is boggy in places not helped by the fact there was a field back there with cows in it so of course they churn it up quite badly it's all good fun though <laughs> so we've passed two mills already Gears Mill and French Mill we are now at the third which is Can Mill The difference being with Can Mill, it is the only one of the five that's still working. And Can Mill still produces bread from local grain. It's actually run by the Stoke family, and the Stoke family are in their fifth generation of millers. And the sixth one just joining, so it's nearly six generations have been millers and it's a big mill but it is still run on um, at least partly or mainly water power and it uses local grain to produce flour which goes out throughout the south coast of England and it's even gone abroad actually at one time I think it's partly thanks to the kind of growth in artisan bakeries in this century I suppose that well recent comparatively recent years I suppose we've had a lot of artisan bakeries and that sort of thing and so this place can mill but it's mill pond down there continues to flourish I think that's a really good story and the fourth one Sprague's Mill was somewhere on this side of the main road beside the river but I'm not sure exactly where or if there's anything left of it I believe it was somewhere over there but there is an old building over there but I don't know if that's the actual mill I suspect it's not but I don't know anyway we are continuing to follow the river Spurkle along the bottom of the valley which is quite mucky <laughs> So we're nearly at the final mill now which is Melbury Abbas Mill also known as Barfoot's Mill and you know what I think this is the prettiest of all of them it's got a lovely garden this is beautiful in the spring walking along here beside the river is here Melbury Abbas Mill
and it's still got its water wheel in place overshot water wheel and some mill pond is over the top we'll go past that in a minute Abbas Mill across the mill pond so picturesque complete with ducks <laughs> the river spherical coming through its pipe so we're near the top of the valley now so the spring is not very far away from here. And we are back in Melbury Abbas village again, different part of the village. And we've got a little bit of road walking I think, which will be a relief to be honest. After all the mud in the valleys. Hmm. Interesting house, what the story is behind that. Bow Street, Police Public Court, the Copper as it's called. Looks like the Statue of Liberty is over there as well. Hmm. Anybody for a book? I wonder if that was a police house at some point or something. Huh. Huh. Didn't want to talk to me. So we've now reached the bottom of Melbury Beacon. I got a nice stiff climb to get up to the top and I reckon the wind is going to get up almost straight away so what a beautiful evening it is though Well, we'll take in the view here before I get above the tree line and out into the wind line. <laughs> I'm part way up um, Melbury Beacon. That's where we were earlier on. Up over there at Shaftesbury. But we're looking the other way this time. farther around you can see Duncliffe Woods over there that is a great view on a beautiful evening sure it'll be better from the top but you won't hear what I'm saying <laughs> but we've still got a bit of sun so that's good but now you've got to head upwards Getting higher. Getting there. This is an interesting feature. may just look like a groove or trench but it's actually an ancient field boundary which is known as a cross dike a 
and there's quite a few of them around here that one's been picked out by the setting sun we're still going upwards sunset over the airfield so we've reached more or less the end of the walk what a great walk it's been such an awesome day it might have been windy on the hilltops and boggy in the bottoms but it's been a great walk anyway and to be honest I don't care about the conditions really. I love walking in any condition, whether it's rain or shine or muddy or hard underfoot. I just love being out in the open and walking and this has been a great day to be out. So this is time for me to finish the video. The sun has already set over the Blackmore Vale. The last embers glowing in the sky. And I'm just about to finish and get back to the starting point again. So this is just to say, thanks so much for coming with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's been fantastic. Awesome walk. So thanks for coming with me. And for now, this is me, the Dorset Rambler saying, until next time.